from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hi everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage, CUBE Live program for reInvent 2020. This is our CUBE virtual. We're not in person like we normally are. Today is the AWS Public Sector Worldwide Celebration Day. A lot of content coming from Teresa Carlson and her team and highlighting everything. Of course, the CUBE channel on the reInvent event site with all the content we'll be streaming there. If you go to the description, you can click on the link and check out all the on-demand interviews. We've done hundreds of videos live before the event, pre-recorded, as well as here live uh, today for Public Sector Day. And I'm joined with Lisa Martin, co-host of theCUBE, who's been involved in a lot of those interviews. Uh, Lisa, great to see you before we, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Likewise, good to see you too, John. Glad that you're staying safe. Well, a lot of good action. And before we get started, I do want to put a plug out for um, some Salesforce big party virtual event. Uh, Salesforce is having a big party at reInvent 2020, a virtual house party with Chance the Rapper performing an exclusive set with surprise celebrities and DJ in residence. December 10th, that's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. Go to salesforce.com slash big party to check out Chance the Rapper. Uh, I'm a big fan. Of course, my kids are more fans than uh, check out the sales report. Okay, back to CUBE Virtual. Lisa, great to see you. Likewise, John. So Public Sector Day, a lot of transformation. We, I mean, reInvent being reinvented, being virtual, 500,000 registrants. So, so much has changed, but a lot also that Teresa Carlson spoke about in her keynote this morning about the transformation across the public sector that's really been driven by necessity with COVID. It was really impressive to hear and see all of the good things that AWS is facilitating across healthcare, government, education, state and local, you name it. Yeah, the thing I love about Teresa is she's always been, ever since I've known her now, she's been on theCUBE every year since 2013, since we've been covering reInvent. She's always had a big, bold vision and she's always kind of stayed on that track. And this year, that was really clear out of the box on her, her leadership session. You got to think big and you got to look at the value of the data. That was the key uh, message from her, her and her group, public sector, by the way, has been highly active with the COVID pandemic. A lot of public services have been leveraging Amazon Cloud to serve uh, their, their, their people, whether it's getting them the checks for entitlements or getting them you know, pharmacy drugs and whatnot and helping them with the pandemic. But clearly Amazon has stepped up and, and helped education with, with uh, remotes. So Teresa's team has been pretty busy. <laughs> so I don't think if they had more time to prepare for a virtual keynote, I should have been chock full of more announcements. Yeah, and, and also some great examples, as you mentioned, we heard from UK Biobank. Some of the interviews also that have already happened on theCUBE that you've done showed some amazing work that AWS has helped facilitate for school districts in Los Angeles, for example, the government of Rhode Island. And those are some of the great things, Cabbage, what they were able to enable Cabbage to do to deliver small business loans so quickly. A lot of that I thought, I wish we were hearing more about how technology is facilitating so much goodness in COVID on the news. Of course, we're hearing a lot of the challenges with online learning, but there's a lot of uh, amazing things that AWS has been able to facilitate incredibly quickly. You know, one of the conversations I had with Teresa and her team years and years ago was this idea of national parks, right? You know, we have spaces where we can go visit. And why isn't there a cyber version of that? And so you, you saw that progression and she'd been doing a lot of deals where they're using the cloud and donating their technology for the betterment of society. And one of the things that was um, news today was an advancement of their open data registry, which has been kind of this open commons of you know, health data and whatnot. Now they have all the sequencing data that's searchable and readable uh, from the National Institute of Health for DNA sequencing. So this is going to be, again, a more commons-like approach. You're starting to see that. I think this is going to be a real big trend, Lisa. I think you're going to start to see the big companies have to really contribute to society in a way that we've never seen before because they have the large scale. You can donate large compute to say research projects. So you're starting to see uh, from Teresa's team, the bubbling up of these new shared experiences around technology for the betterment of society. I think that sequencing was one. The renewable energy project, another one, again, they're investing in women owned businesses and underrepresented minorities and at small medium sized businesses to fund them. 
we saw a guy launching stuff in space that can create, you know, synthetic satellites so you can look through clouds. This is new. I mean, this is interesting. It is interesting and it actually, to your point, is impactful at every level across the globe. Going from, uh, we, they talked about WeFarm, creating this network of small scale farmers. Connectivity was their biggest problem and now there's over a million, I'm sure that number, it's probably even bigger, of connected farmers due to AWS. You talked about also, it's the CORD19 search, which is the expansion of their open research data set, COVID open research data set that is only possible because of cloud computing and AWS, hundreds of thousands of assets in their um, 200 plus open data sets for genomic research. She talked about how that's been a facilitator of some of the things that we've seen go on so quickly at, with Operation Warp Speed uh, with respect to the vaccine. So a lot of acceleration when we know public sector kind of traditionally not necessarily fast movers, but of course, as we've all said a number of times recently, Necessity is the mother of invention and the speed element and the connectivity element were things that really spoke loudly to me with what Teresa said today about the importance of extracting value from data. You know, when I talked to Andy Jassy and he talked about this on his keynote, the digital transformations on full display and, and the necessity of being the mother of invention is a great phrase that's just been sticking because you can't hide. I mean, you have to deliver these services in the public sector or, you know, people's lives are going to be impacted and certainly there's there's death involved, right? So you have um, that. And then you've got education. I mean, people want to see that changed quicker. There's always been comments, oh, education's got to be reimagined. Well, guess what? There's no school open. So we got to reimagine it now. So you got a lot of pressure, unprecedented demand. She said, Teresa said, Teresa Carlson actually said on stage for education change. Um, so that's huge, right? And then the other thing that she mentioned, I think that's going to be a big focus. It's not as, um, you know, headline news oriented, is this whole jobs training piece. Um, that's a huge deal because the, the tsunami that hit so fast on this digital transformation because of COVID, we're going to have a post COVID era of rapid acceleration of new skills. So people got to get trained. So this ain't going to be the boring training programs. They got to be, they got to get better. So I think you're going to see some innovation, Lisa, around how people think about delivering and constructing training programs to be much more real world, thinking outside the box, you're going to start to see new things. Uh, otherwise it's, it's just going to be too slow. The, the training right now is just, you know, sign up for courseware and get a certification. Yeah, you got to do those things, but how can you get certifications done faster? How do you get people with the skills in their hands and virtual hands, if you will, to stand up more cloud, more AI? The pressure's there. So we can, that's going to be a huge thing to watch. The pressure is there, you're right, and the need is there. She talked about a lot of the demand that their customers are driving for some of the services and the education services as well that they're offering. But I like to point about upskilling, focusing on the people, not just the people, but also the diversity and inclusion. And we all know how impactful thought diversity is. So their, their dedication there and their focus there, and also her recommendation to be bold and I think in the education respect was really critical. There is no time like now to move digital transformation. If education systems aren't there, then you know it's a huge challenge and it impacts every person, every element of every family. So what they're able to do there by focusing on the people, enabling folks to get trained faster, more resources online can only be a good thing. You know, Teresa has always um, has her own flair to style to her. She's, incredible businesswoman, have such respect for her. She's been so successful, uh, but she always ends her presentations with the kind of the, the, the kind of her to do's um, and you kind of pointed it out. So just review them with you. And I want to get your reaction. Number one, she said, you got to reimagine and enable a digital, a digitally enabled business. Number two, identify data has unrealized value and then increase your diversity. And she pointed to ADOS.training. Um, and that's kind of her kind of get out there and do those things. So digitally enabled business, get that unrealized data, get it into work and increase your diversity. And then she has, usually has a big party every year. She said, instead of a party, go out and do a random act of kindness act. So, you know, typical Teresa Flair, you know, she kind of ended it with a random act of kindness, but, but her bold vision, those are practical uh, mandates. 
Absolutely. What's your reaction to, to that? I, a bold vision, I absolutely 100%. I think right now is the time no business can afford to be hiding under the covers. We have to be, they have to be very thoughtful and very prescriptive, but be bold. There's so much opportunity right now. We're seeing a ton of invention and innovation, John, that we've seen over the last nine months. There's a lot of COVID catalysts that we've been talking about on the Cube that are really fantastic. So I think that recommendation to set a bold vision is absolutely imperative, not easy to achieve, but I think right now more than ever, it could really be what sets apart the winners and losers of tomorrow. Yeah, I love it. I'll just say that on this final note, um, cloud and AI is really in play. Cloud scale, machine learning, which essentially feeds AI is all about data. Compute, going down the chip level, AI and software and data is critical for cloud. So really awesome keynote. Again, leadership session by Teresa Carlson. And there's a whole site of content available. Check out the Cube page. Click down on the main page. You'll see the description. You'll see a link to the reInvent page and check on the public sector. A lot of great content. Uh, Lisa, final question for us to kind of close out this uh, keynote leadership session analysis here on Public Sector Day. I want to get your take on um, the interviews you've done with the Amazon folks and partners and customers. What are the themes that have been boiling out of those? What have you have been hearing? What's your take and observation of the common pattern trends? You know, given the fact that we haven't all been able to be together, my last CUBE event in person was reInvent 2019. And we're so used to having, you know, three, four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, two sets, being able to have those close personal conversations with our guests. This year really did a phenomenal job of recreating that same experience digitally. There's tremendous amount of innovation happening. I think that was the one thing that really jumped out at me, the speed at, with which it's happening, how so many different types of businesses have pivoted, not once, but again and again and again, as times are changing and how even I, yesterday I interviewed Boone Supersonic CEO, some of the things that they're facilitating to get commercial um, supersonic flight back that only cloud and AI and machine learning can do, that there was no stoppage of innovation this year. In fact, it actually got faster. And I think that was a resounding theme and a lot of positivity from the guests. Well, you know, the Cube's business was to go to events and extract the signal from the noise. Guess what? There's no physical events. We are the Cube Virtual. We have pivoted. We are now in our eighth, ninth month of Cube Virtual. It's been a new model. We've gotten more interviews, more people can just click into the Cube Virtual. We have more virtual sets. The Cube's been virtualized, Lisa, although I miss it has. in real life, but it's a whole new ball game for us. It is a whole new ball game. And it's, it also provides a lot of opportunities yeah. for businesses to get their messaging out and connect and engage with their audience, which is important. Well, I miss real life. I miss everybody out there. I wish we could be there in person. Uh, the world will stay hybrid, I think, with virtual. I think this has been a great format. There's been some great benefits, but we want to be in person. <laughs> Why wouldn't you on the desk with us? So, and all I the agree. folks out there, I uh, wish we could see you next. We'll see you next year. Thanks everyone for watching theCUBE. This is our keynote analysis and leadership analysis of the worldwide public sector Teresa Carlson keynote. I'm John Furrier, Lisa Martin. Thanks for watching.